Hi, my name is Ryan Langwish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. And today I'm going to be continuing my series about scripting in Tabletop Simulator with what I believe to be maybe the best tip for someone who wants to script in Tabletop Simulator regularly. If you've seen some of my other videos, you might recognize what you're seeing on the screen right now, um, which is a previous example I did, which was how to script um, kind of an auto refill of cards. So I can I can click this and have the cards auto refill, um, and then I think the ones that already are out there will get uh, coins accumulating on them. If this is something that's interested you, if you didn't see that video, I'll link to that up above in the card, and you can check out that video as well. But I'm today just going to be using this as an example um, to kind of talk through this, this tip um, of basically being able to use a text editor that isn't the text editor built into Tabletop Simulator for your scripts. And not only use another text editor, but use one that's officially supported by the Tabletop Simulator um, team and that they've provided a tool, a plugin to make it more powerful, um, definitely a lot more powerful than what you would use inside of Tabletop Simulator. Now if you're at all familiar with scripting in Tabletop Simulator or have seen some of my other videos, you might know that if we go into modding, we can go into the scripting editor here, and it's basically going to show us all the different scripts that we have attached to any objects in our scene. So we've got kind of the global script that's already there, and here we have this checker that's essentially um, what's producing our button. You can see it kind of outlined there. And in all my videos so far, I've used this text editor to make all the changes and then I've clicked save and play and that's how we've kind of applied scripting changes to the mod. However, if you're an avid watcher of the channel, you will know that this scripting editor is not really great and has annoyed me on many instances, not just because it, it doesn't have any highlighting of the syntax, it's all just kind of one color and you know it's a little bit annoying to work in but it sometimes even is really buggy. Like I've had instances where like typing something throws me to the bottom of the, the file or things like that and it's just like really frustrating to work with. And so that's kind of the, the problem and I think the, the company, um, I think Berserk Games that makes Tabletop Simulator is very aware that this is a pain point. And so for kind of power users that are gonna be scripting a lot, they encourage you to use a separate text editor, specifically the text editor Atom, A-T-O-M. And that is because they are have provided a plugin for Atom that's gonna make this um, very seamless to use it between this and Tabletop Simulator. So to begin with this, let's talk about how you would actually go and download Atom. So if you just navigate to atom.io or search in your browser for download Atom, you should land on a page like this that should recognize what OS you're on. I'm on Mac and should give you a download button. You're simply going to want to download this and then install it onto your computer. Once you've installed and fired up Atom, you should see something like this. And it says, Atom, a hackable text editor for the 21st century. So part of what makes Atom kind of a cool text editor, and it's a pretty popular text editor among programmers, um, is that one, it's actually a web app. So it's a web application that's running on the desktop, which makes it very flexible for extensions. And that's really what they mean by hackable is there's, you can make customized changes to it and you can download a lot of extensions that other people have made for it to kind of customize the text editor. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here because we're going to be using the tabletop simulator extension to add them. So I can go ahead and kind of close, you know, some of these welcome tabs or whatever. But I want to actually go up into the menu here and I'm going to want to go to preferences. You can also get there at least on Mac with command comma. Um, and in here we have an option for install. So if I come to install, I'm able to search packages for anything that um, Adam has, which is a lot of things. I don't actually use Atom outside of um, what I've used it for Tabletop Simulator, um, but I know it has lots and lots and lots of options. But here we're gonna wanna search for Tabletop Simulator. Um, yep, and there we got it coming up at the top here by Berserk Games, official plugin for Tabletop Simulator's Lua Scripting. We can see it's very popular, over 60,000 downloads. We want to install that. So if we wait here a moment, once it's finished installing, you should see um, settings, uninstall, disable. It, that means that it is now actively running um, in your instance of Atom. So what does this change about it? Because Atom ultimately is just a text editor. What it's actually doing is if we come up into this packages menu, we can see there's a new 
option here for Tabletop Simulator. It's added this here, and it's adding a bunch of specific Tabletop Simulator functions. And I'm not gonna go over all of these. In fact, I don't even know exactly what all of them do. But the core ones that we're gonna look at here are the Get Lua scripts and the Save and Play. And so what this is gonna do is I right now have Tabletop Simulator running in the background, just like I did when I, when I started out the video. It's still running on my computer there. And what this Get Lua scripts command is going to do is it's gonna find Tabletop Simulator, as long as you have it running on your computer, and it's gonna pull in all of the Lua scripts from your currently running mod that's in Tabletop Simulator. So let's go ahead and click this. It's gonna say get Lua scripts from game. Sure. And just like that, I now have populated over here a folder for tabula, Tabletop Simulator Lua, and I have each of the files that are in there. So like, if you are at all familiar with the, this example, most of my logic is in that checker. Um, and so this is the object, or, or the logic for refilling cards. And so that's pulled straight from there. And immediately you can already see that this looks a lot nicer than what we had in Tabletop Simulator because we're getting full um, syntax highlighting for Lua files. So the text editor is recognizing Lua and knows that, okay, get tables, a function, these different things, um, and can kind of make it very easy to read. But now what I can do once I'm here is I can make changes in here and then end up loading them back to Tabletop Simulator. So let's just make a really basic change. Let's actually just go into our um, XML file for the checker, which is defining the size of our button. Let's just make our button like really wide or something. Just something that we'll notice. We can see the dot here means this isn't saved yet. Um, let's go ahead and save it. But then we are going to use that other function that was here, which is save and play. Now you'll notice that on the right hand of these um, lines here, it has keyboard shortcuts as well. So you don't even have to go into packages and go here. You can simply go control shift L and control shift S. And so once you get into kind of a cycle of working with it, really quick, just you wanna pull them from tabletop simulator, control shift L. You wanna, you know, made changes here and you wanna send them to tabletop simulator, control shift S. So I'm gonna hit save and play. We're gonna see sending four files, receive four files. That's telling us that it, it made it to Tabletop Simulator. And so if we pop back to Tabletop Simulator, we can see we have a really long button now, which is exactly what I changed. So not only did it update my scripts in Tabletop Simulator, like if I went in here and looked at scripting, I'm gonna see that exact change here, the 1600, but it also went ahead and triggered the save and play that loaded it. So by the time I got back to this window, it had already reloaded everything. I didn't have to do anything more, which is super useful, super powerful. And so you can already see how this is gonna be a really nice workflow because you get to work in the really nice text editor and then you could just send your changes over um, to Tabletop Simulator and never even have to touch the scripting editor that is in here. Now that would be enough in and of itself to be a hugely useful um, thing if you're consistently scripting in Tabletop Simulator. But this plugin goes even further in that it includes awareness of the Tabletop Simulator specific functions. So I talked about how this is highlighting according to the Lua syntax, but it's not just doing that. It's also recognizing things like this, where the get object from GUID, it knows that that's a tabletop simulator function. To better show this, let's actually say, you know, here I have my deck variable that I'm setting here. Let's say on the next line I started, I wanted to do something with the deck. You'll notice as I start typing, it already suggests something. It's saying destroy object, so like maybe you wanna use that function. That's a tabletop simulator function that it's suggesting, not something in Lua or anything. And if I do deck dot, it's gonna start showing me everything that I could call, every function or variable I could access on a deck. So for example, I might with a deck wanna deal a card. So if I start typing that, you'll see deal here pop up and it literally tells me, okay, the first thing you pass to deal is a number, an integer, that's the number of cards you wanna deal. And then these brackets tell me these are optional. So there must be some default um, if I don't provide that, but I can say what player I wanna deal to the white player, to the green player. And there's some other options here. Um, and it shows me other options like deal to color with offset. 
And then on the left here, we have the return value, like deal when it's done, it returns a bool, which is either true or false, is the return value of that function. This may look familiar to you or not, depending on if you've done any programming, um, but it's just kind of telling you like this is the, the signature of how to use this particular function. Not only that, it adds this little description down here. So as I type deal, it says deals to player's hand. If no player color supplied, it will deal to all seated players. So that actually tells me exactly if I leave off player, it's actually gonna deal that many cards to everybody. So just like that, I get that information without having to look for it. But maybe I wanna know even more about this deal function there's this more link and when I click that, it actually opens up my browser to the Tabletop Simulator API documentation and to exactly the function that I'm clicking for more information on. So now I can read about deal, I can get all the information, the descriptions of every single argument, and that's all linked directly into the Atom editor. Now all of that is probably enough to convince you that this is worthwhile and that you would much rather be working with this workflow than trying to deal with the scripting editor in Tabletop Simulator. Um, but I'm going to talk about one more little feature, and, th and this is not a comprehensive video. If you really enjoy working with this, um, you might look more into the documentation for, for this particular plugin to learn about some of those other functions. Um, but I'm going to talk about which one more, which is actually how you can get logging from, your, um, from Tabletop Simulator when you're playing to actually come back to Atom. So it's very common in programming, and I think in some of my previous examples I've done this, where you want to kind of debug something or see how a certain stretch of code is kind of behaving. And you might put in print statements or log statements that are going to print something into the chat so that you know like, okay, if this printed into the chat, I know that it went to this place in the code. It flowed through in this way. And that's very useful and you could spit it out in the chat. But this actually enables that you can have those logs coming back to the console in Atom. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna open up the console. So if we go to view, I believe, um, developer, toggle developer tools, which is also option command I. So if I do that, it's gonna open up this little sidebar, which may look familiar to if you've ever been in like Google Chrome and you've opened up the developer tools. It's literally the same thing. And the reason for that is that Atom, like I mentioned earlier, is a web app that's only running on desktop because it's running in the Electron shell, which is just a piece of software that kind of wraps a web app in a browser-like container. Um, and so we kind of have this over here that we have a console where things are getting printed. And so these are just some random other things that have been printed. Um, but we can now use this to our advantage to use our own logging. So let's say on this refill cards function, which is whenever I click that button, I want to log. I'm going to use log. And you can see the options here of um, the different things you could do. Let's just do this one. And when I click that, it actually fills this in. Um, which I think I just can put a string for log. We'll see if this actually works. Um, and I'm just gonna say refill, huzzah. Um, and we're gonna save that. So we now wanna send that back to um, Tabletop Simulator, which normally I would use the keyboard shortcut, but it's a little, it shows up a little better on video if I actually just come in and click it here. I'm gonna do save and play, sends the files, receive the files. Let's go back to Tabletop Simulator. So here now we should expect that we can click refill cards and that works and it does this and I can click it a bunch of times. But the addition now is we have that log statement. So now we wanna go back into Atom and see if we actually see those log statements showing up. And lo and behold, we have this showing here, refill, and it says that it's logged that eight times because I clicked it, <laughs> the button eight times. Now what's more useful about logging it here is this allows me to um, copy and paste it, it gives me some better information. Um, I mean, I guess this isn't very useful, like line number, because Tabletop Simulator is kind of combining all the files, so you're getting kind of crazy line numbers that don't match here. Um, but the fact that you get it in your code editor and it's more easy to copy and paste it is just useful. And if I was kind of debugging something, I could see it on one side while I'm fixing it in here. So it's another little thing, um, but if you're doing kind of more intensive scripting um, and really kind of debugging with how it's working and doing things, the ability to log and print certain things, or you know, if I had like an object or a Lua table that's, that's complex, I could potentially print that whole thing out um, and be able to see that information here. So another little fun fact 
that you can do with this extension. And that's it. Pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to use, and honestly, a big boon to just the scripting experience. I likely, for any scripting videos I make past this point, will use this workflow so that I don't have to deal with the scripting editor in Tabletop Simulator anymore. Hopefully you found this to be a useful tip and one that you can use in your own workflow. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.